news reports on TV, radio and the internet continue to provide us with details of the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. Some will ask that if there is a God, what will he do about this conflict? As Bible students, we believe that the Bible is the word of God, and so we will explore what the Bible has to say. We intend to provide four short videos looking at what the Bible teaches under the theme of Russia, Israel, Christ and you, to find out what the Bible has to say. Each of these subjects is closely connected, and the resulting picture that the Bible gives us is the solution to war. It also shows how we as individuals can have a real hope for the future. In doing this, we do not comment on the political aspects of any of the actions that have been or are being taken, but rather on what the Bible teaches. Let us begin by looking at the area in which the current conflict is taking place and its history, as this is something that is relevant to the present war. It is a fact of history that at one time there was a federation of nations that were united together, whose centre of government was in Kiev. It was known as Kievian Rus. The name Rus can be quickly seen to form part of the names of Russia and Belarus, and Kiev associates this nation with the present capital city of Ukraine. Mr Putin is correct in his understanding of history and referred to this in a document that he wrote, which was posted on the internet and has been referred to in recent news reports. Historically, there were close ties between these three countries. A Russian controlled government in Kiev would result in the three countries being once again united under a common rule. If we look at the map, we see the extent of the state of Rus at one point in history. The extent of the territory that it covers shows us that it was indeed the largest state in Europe at that time. It also shows that its eastern borders, including Moscow, and a large area of what is today central Russia. Like many ancient countries, borders and rulership changed over time and it subsequently ceased to become a large European state. Let us now see what the Bible says. The prophet Ezekiel prophesied in around the 6th century BC. The word that God caused him to write includes a rash reference to the land of Rosh. Although this word is not exactly the same word as Rus, the similarity is undeniable. We will look at the prophecy in more detail in our next video. But for the present, our interest is to explore whether or not this is a reference to Russia, independently of the similarity between the two words. While we are looking at what the prophet has to say, notice how he sees Rosh and the nations of Magog, Meshach and Tubal. The prophet sees them as a heavily armed confederacy of powers. They are distinguished by their army, means of transport and the armaments that they possessed. Contrast the picture that the prophet sees with what we know to be true of present day Russia. It is independently described as one of the largest military forces with around one million men and as having considerable armaments. The prophecy of Ezekiel in the 38th chapter cannot be seen to have been fulfilled in history. So we look for a nation today that it's that the prophet might be describing. And modern day Russia fits the description that the prophet has. Now we consider the word Rosh. One of the most respected scholars of ancient Hebrew, a man called Jesenius, compiled a lexicon, which is a primary point of reference for most Bible students who wish to learn the meaning of the original words that form part of the Hebrew text of the Old Testament of the Bible. On the meaning of Rosh, he identifies it 
together with the other nations that Ezekiel mentions, as the Russians. He refers to two ancient historians as a basis for this. This understanding goes back even further in time, as Josephus, a Jewish hist historian of the first century, writes of Magog, another nation referred to by Ezekiel, as being part of Scythia, a people who in the past occupied the territory of Rus. All this shows that Russia does appear in the Bible. Our consideration of what God says in Ezekiel 38 shows that Russia is not only referred to in the Bible, but is referred to as a highly powerful military power. The accuracy of that detail today not only shows that what the Bible says is true, but also shows that what Ezekiel saw relates to Russia as we see her today. It provides us with confidence that further details regarding Russia that are contained in this Bible prophecy can also be trusted as being correct. Now Ezekiel was a Jew and his prophecy was written to Jews. So unsurprisingly, the prophecy proceeds to foretell events relating to Russia in its dealings with Israel. Having established that Russia does appear in the Bible, in our next video entitled Russia and Israel in Bible Prophecy, we will see what else Ezekiel predicts. We hope that you have found this in video interesting and would be delighted if you view the next video in the series. If you would like to do so, then the link will be posted on the Swansea Christadelphians Facebook page. The size of the Bible can make it difficult to know how to start to explore what it has to say. And so we are arranging a series of seminars that have been specially developed to help both new and more experienced readers in being able to read it more effectively. Again, the links will appear on the Swansea Christadelphian Facebook page. If you would like to read more about Bible prophecy, a free booklet is available online. All these resources are free and without obligation. As in all things, all these arrangements are subject to the will of Almighty God. Thank you once again for viewing this video. Thank you.